Hello everyone and welcome to our service from St Mary's in Guzna on this, the seventh Sunday after Trinity. You're most welcome to join us uh, across the Fellside team as we uh, come together online to worship God in word and in music. So as we come to worship, let us just pause for a moment. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us this day to say your praise with thankfulness, to listen to your word with open minds, to pray, trusting you to answer, and to follow your ways faithfully. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we come to worship, we acknowledge that we are far more in need of God than God is in need of us. And that each of us, in our own way, has done things that we are not comfortable with, some things that we know we need to bring to God, to confess and to receive his pardon and forgiveness. So for the ways we've hurt others, by what we have said or done, Lord, have mercy. For the ways we have damaged your creation, Christ, have mercy. For the ways we have broken our relationship with you, God, Lord, have mercy. So may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly say that they are sorry and turn again to him, Forgive us our sins and let us live in peace and harmony with each other and with God, now and always. Amen. So now we come to the collect for today, the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So if you would like to, you could stop the video at this point and find your Bible. We're going to read from Romans chapter 8, and we're beginning at the 24th verse. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sleep to be sh sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. This is Paul's amazing understanding about the quality of God's love, about the quality of God's love for each of us. The quality of God's love, not just for those of us listening um, today, but for the whole of humanity. And not just the whole of humanity, but the whole of creation. And it was an understanding that was forged by a lifetime of struggles. Remember, this was one of the most ardent opponents of the early church, zealously seeking permission to confront any follower of Jesus, that false Messiah, wherever he found them. Then he encountered the divine on the road to Damascus, and after three years away from the limelight, Three years when he pondered and reflected on that experience and learned as much as he could. He was ready to publicly declare his faith in the love of God in Christ. He was ready then to face ridicule, to face persecution, personal hardship, shipwreck, imprisonment and ultimately death for the sake of what he had grown to understand for what the Holy Spirit had inspired in him. He could not keep his insights to himself. He could not hold in what he understood about the height and depth of God's love for himself and also for other people. He could not keep quiet, no matter how ridiculous, how countercultural and how mad it might sound to all those listening to him. This truth was too important. It was too important to bury in a field or leave hidden in the depths of the sea. This was a truth that needs to be heard. It needed to be heard then and it continues to need to be heard today. One of the many challenges that we face today is that we take so much for granted. We've forgotten how revolutionary, how countercultural, how subversive, how mind boggling Jesus is teaching and ultimately his death and resurrection were then and still are today. It's all a bit too familiar and we take it for granted. In Jesus' teaching about the kingdom of God, it's really important to notice that he uses the ordinary and everyday things of the world around him to illustrate something of the nature of God, his kingdom and his love. He talks about mustard seeds growing. He talks about wheat fields becoming abundant. He talks about yeast invading and suffusing the dough to enable it to rise. He talks about things that are in the ordinary, the things that his hearers would understand. He even talks about the presence of God in the patch of weeds, as we heard last week. But somehow, we seem to have come immune to seeing God's kingdom in the ordinary and in the mundane. We seem to want to find it only in the extraordinary and the inspirational. And of course, God's love is there. God's love is everywhere. God's love is what, wherever we are. But we seem to constantly forget to look for it wherever we are, in the mundane and the routine. You see, the kingdom of God is wherever God's love is perfectly manifested. And I'm not sure I can really describe where that might be. 
other than when I see someone caring for someone else, when I see a child looking lovingly at their parents. You see, I think God's love is everywhere where there is kindness and compassion. And actually, it's a state of being as much as it is a physical place. But what we must never take for granted is that God's love and God's love in our lives is a pearl of great price. Because God's love is that place where we are truly able to be ourselves. Where we can inhabit that moment without regret and without fear. God's love is the place where we know we are accepted warts and all and God's love is not just for us it's for all of people and creation it's not just for us but it's for our neighbor it's not just for us but it's for those who have hurt us and for those we have hurt and I think when we stop and think and really look, we see glimpses of the kingdom of God and of God's love in the most unexpected places. And I am hoping that our new church mice might encourage us to open our eyes a little and see that love a little bit more. That our church mice, when they come out on a Sunday, will encourage us to look up and to look around and see what is around us in our churches and be reconnected with the amazing spaces that they are. I'm going to introduce you to Oliver. Oliver is going to be the church mouse at St Mary's and I will leave you to work out why he's called Oliver and why he's got a red jumper on and if you're not sure Go and ask a youngster who lives in Guzna, and they will probably be able to tell you why. Now, Oliver is going to be at St Mary's, and there are going to be mice at all the other churches in our, in our team. And each of them has asked me to, to share with you what they've whispered to me, which is they are a bit shy, and they're a little bit scared because obviously mice have a very bad press. But they don't need to be put in a mouse trap, and they promise they're not going to nibble or gnaw anything that they shouldn't. But actually what they really want to do is to share God's love, not just with the people who come to church, but with those who are not in church. And so they've promised that each Sunday they will have with them a little bag with a prayer and a simple, small gift. And they would really love one member of the congregation to take that bag and to give it to someone who needs it. Someone that they know might just welcome some love and just that little random act of kindness. So, is that okay? Have I said that all right? Good, all right. Shall I let you go back to where you're hiding? So each of the mice is there to remind us to share God's love with those in our community, to help us to look up and look around, to notice and to take time to notice. Yes, it's a bit of fun, but also it's a bit of reminding us that God's love is everywhere. And you know what? God's love changes people and amazing things happen. So let's look up, let's look out and let's open our eyes for God's love and look for it and find it because God's love surrounds us, surrounds you and it surrounds me. So as we think about that, let us just listen to a piece of music. Very famous chorus written by Stuart Townend.
So recognising the faith that we have and the power in which we stand and the love of God that we celebrate, we declare our faith. We believe and trust in God the Father who made all things. We believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us come to God in prayer. May the Spirit pray through us as we try to put into words the longings of our hearts, for the church and for this world. 
Lord, we thank you for all who have helped us to pray and to grasp something of your great love and power. We ask your blessing and your empowering for all those who share their faith with others. And we ask that all we do and that all we say may speak of your love for all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we thank you for the amazing beauty and complex diversity of the created world. We ask for wisdom to live gently upon it, sharing its abundance with all. Help us to listen to the weak as well as to the strident, to listen to the poor as well as the powerful, and to build your kingdom in all that we do and say. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we thank you for the candour and innocence of the young, and especially for all our school communities as they start their summer holidays. We thank you for the joy of friendship and for all with whom we share daily life. We thank you for all we love but are unable to see as often as we would like. We ask for hearts that are skilled in listening, so that all that we say and all that we do reflects your love for one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we thank you for all those working in health and social care, for scientists and those in public health who are using their knowledge and expertise to provide care and enable us to be as safe as we can be during this pandemic. We pray for all those who are fearful and anxious, for all those who are struggling physically, mentally or spiritually. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before you those who are on our hearts this day. Give comfort healing and peace to all in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we thank you for your wisdom and truth, your generosity and your overwhelming longing to answer our prayers. And we acknowledge our total dependence on you and give thanks for your love and your blessings that you shower upon us. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us join all our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So as we come to the end of this service of prayer and reflection, let us recognise the enormity of God's love for us as shown by his willingness to sacrifice his only son Jesus on the cross for each and every one of us. Jesus, Lord of time and space, hold us in your eternity. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, journey with us in the life of faith. Jesus, the compassionate, heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow, call us to your freedom, inspire us by your spirit and enfold us in your love. Day by day, lead us into your kingdom that we may be drawn deeper into the heart of God, the dance of the Trinity, that you may resonate through our lives now and forever. Amen. So may the blessing of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, be with us, be with all those we love, 
for all those that we pray for, this day and always. Amen. Go in love and the peace of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.